The Christmas break is over and it's the first week of school. But these pupils aren't attending regular classes just yet. This is a special group counseling session for survivors of Typhoon Bofa. Eight-year-old Glenn Larobis lost six of his cousins during the typhoon. He says he too would have been dead had his brother not saved him. He watched his house get swept away and has been living in an evacuation center with what's left of his family. He often relives the typhoon in his sleep. We were so scared. The water coming towards our house was as high as a coconut tree. If we didn't run, we'd all be dead. This remains a very fragile and nervous community. Every time it rains, people rush to seek shelter, fearing the worst could happen again. And as much as efforts are being focused on what social workers are calling survivors' physical needs, such as providing food, water, and shelter, there are also invisible concerns that must be dealt with. This is a uh, economically depressed area. And uh, uh, with now the situation of uh, increased poverty of families. So there might uh, really be strong pressure and uh, uh, easily, easy for uh, uh, unscrupulous persons to lure children uh, to work or to be exploited. So they want the children back in school to give them a sense of normalcy and hope. But there are no normal or undamaged schools left here at all. Though they now carry on as best they can, the children who survived Typhoon Bofa know things have changed. And life is far more vulnerable than they might have realized before. Margot Tigas, Al Jazeera, Compostela Valley, Southern Philippines.